Oh, hey, happy Sunday, happy Sunday to you. Let me say my grace and I'll tell y'all what I got for dinner. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you today just to say thank you, God. Thank you for blessing us to see this day. Thank you for our portion of health and strength, Lord, for being in our right mind and having our senses, Lord. We just thank you right now, God. We ask you to bless those, God, that have not right now, Lord God. Whatever they need might be, Lord, we know that you can meet that need. And we ask you to do so, Lord God, if it's your will. Lord, we thank you for the food we're about to receive, for the nourishing of our bodies. In Christ's name, amen, amen. Amen, amen. So today I tried something new, y'all. This is a piece of buffalo fish. Do y'all like buffalo? It's big bone buffalo. I got a few cucumbers and some turnip greens. And y'all know you can't have fish without hot sauce. So you know my boy Frank's in the place. Yes, he is. I got me some greens and put it on my... Now, this has bones in it, but it's typically, it has, does have some small bones, but it's typically, typically, typically some big bone, bigger bones in it. So, but you do have to be careful when you eat it. So, do y'all eat buffalo? Now, Amber got me this. Now, these are like the bones that are typically in buffalo. I'm going to show them to you. I like that. And when I get to the bigger bones, I'll show you what. It's like the cut on the rib, so you don't have a whole lot of those. You have some, but. And I love the flavor of big bone buffalo. Now, I cooked it today in the air fryer. I've never had it in the air fryer, so I only cooked a couple of pieces because it's typically hard to find. And typically I eat it with bread just in case I do catch a bone. But I don't have any bread, so. What y'all cook good today? I, um, did I ask y'all do y'all eat buffalo fish? Now I eat the small bone too. But I like, I prefer The big bone. And like I said, typically I have had it baked. But this was the first time I tried an air fryer. There's no breading on this. I just put some seasoning on it. Garlic and onion powder. And I put, you can't go wrong with Old Bay. And I put a little bit of black and seasoning on it. I probably could have used a little more seasoning on it. I didn't want to overdo it, but it tastes fine. But it's still nothing like a piece of fried buffalo fish with the fish fry. Normally, I don't really season it when I put the fish fry on it, so. Y'all, we, um, there was an incident on my job, um, with the company I work for. And I read the story I think it was Thursday morning, and it was a fatality, and they said it was involving two employees. You know, this is a huge corporation, so of course they can't name names. And I often wonder how news outlets get these stories. It was a fatality. It was two employees involved, apparently, an accident on the on the, on the job, They're doing the, doing the overnight shift. And my brother works out there doing night, so I'm trying to, you know. I imagine family members that hear stuff like this are frantic trying to make sure their loved ones are all right because I would send them a message right away, you know, is everything okay? Are you okay? You know, and he said he was right there on the property and then, you know, hadn't even heard anything about it. And I often wonder, you know, I don't, that's not like, that's like an insulated type environment. So, I wonder sometimes how the news outlets get stuff like that and, you know, able to broadcast it before, you know, family members are notified, you know, about their loved ones. I don't, I don't know. It makes you worry, but he was okay, of course. I heard from him, but I'm so sorry for the families. One is in the hospital, from my understanding, and 
Of course, the family that lost their loved one as well. We just pray for them. You know, that's a, you know, you know, your family member go to work. The last thing you think you're going to be doing is receiving a call saying you won't see them again, you know. So, yeah, I was um, watching Lee's World this morning when I got up. I was just fumbling around because I didn't sleep last night too good. Um, so I was up and I was watching her video and she had posted a video with her grandchild, I'm presuming. And um, they were playing Operation. Y'all remember the game Operation? That was one of my favorite games as a kid. And it's so funny because I used to go, like when Emma was a kid, I would go down to, um, we would go down to the game board aisle, you know, doing, um, doing the holiday specifically. And one of the favorite games we played, we played Connect Four a lot, but Trouble was one, Sorry, Monopoly, of course. Oh, sorry, Monopoly. And I think she had sheets and letters. So I just think it's funny. Now, of course, we play Uno and stuff like that because you get that kind of game stuff down there. But I just thought about board games. You know, back when I was a kid, it was, you know, we had a checkerboard. We had a checkerboard game. Um, back when I was a kid, it was like Scrabble and checkers. And so <laughs> I just often think about that. You know, like I said, we play Uno and then we play this game called Phase 10. Of course, we play stuff like categories and stuff now later on in life and put card games like spades and stuff like that, right? But I thought about that. What was one of your favorite? And, do, you know, I was good to see that people still play board games. And I'm like, I have no need to go over in that section anymore. You know, when we go on the cruise, of course, we take a deck of cards with us and we always take Uno cards with us. And it's just so funny, though, that, you know, I was like, it was good to see that kids still play actual games because all you hear about is, like, video games. So it was nice. It was just a nice thing to see. And I wondered, I said, you know, I don't, since I don't go in that area anymore, do they still make a, a large amount of board games, actual board games, board games where people have to sit around the table and, um, uh, do board games and um <laughs> yeah that's interesting and what are the big ones out now you know back we used to sit around and play monopoly and i thought about that i wish they would oh the game of life too we played life but it's so funny because i'm like you didn't even think about it now i still think about it now i don't know why it popped in my head i said you know uh, Monopoly really kind of taught you something. It was kind of a teaching game. It was about real estate. You know, you paid your luxury tax, and uh, if you landed on somebody, uh, if the unimproved property, which meant didn't have any houses or hotels, and if your rent was cheaper, but once they put those houses and hotels on, bam, you know, they had improved the neighborhood. <laughs> it commercialized now, and so you had to pay higher rents. And you don't even think about that kind of stuff. You know, and then sometimes you could just lose everything, go bankrupt, and, uh, you know, but you had to pass on the tax, but you got paid, you know, when you went around the board. So it kind of taught you kind of a level of finance at a higher level. And I just thought, I thought about that, you know. Uh, never really thought about it as a kid, you know. You just uh, liked it for the fun of the game. Well, what were some of your favorite games as a kid? And, um... Do you still play them now? Or do your, if you have kids or grandkids, do your children play, you know, board games? What were some of the games you play with your kids? So, and I was watching um, the Adults Only Cruise, right? And they were playing, they were putting together puzzles. And I thought about that too. I think the most puzzles I've ever put together is like a thousand pieces. I hadn't put the puzzle together in years. And that's always something, it's a game of, it's like something of concentration. You just feel so accomplished when you get a puzzle, you know, put together. 
So I thought about that. I was listening to one of the cruise vlogs, right? And we go on Carnival a lot because once you get to a certain, and Carnival is affordable, but they're not cheap either. You know, depending on what type of room you stay in, but you can't go on a cruise for relatively a nice, you know, decent amount. And like I told you, next time we're planning on staying at a suite, so it's a little bit more expensive. But the thing over there, Carnival is known as the fun ship. You know, it's a lot of activity going on. I imagine that's on any cruise line. But people who have cruised on different cruise lines talk about, you know, the difference in what you're looking for. If you're looking for, like, a lot of young action and stuff like that, Carnival is probably the best thing to go on. But one of these guys that used to work on a cruise, he does cruise blogs, right? Varying amounts, he'll tell you he went on the cheapest cruise he ever went on. He went on an adults only cruise with Virgin. He goes on the Royal Caribbean, uh, you know, different ones. Uh, MSC and different ones, Bahamian cruises and different. He always, uh, he reviews his crew out of different ports, the class of ships and stuff like that. And he was saying that if you're going to do Carnival, and I guess I've never encountered it but it was a little bit more rowdy on the shorter cruises and i saw what he i see what he meant but we didn't have anybody fighting of course on our cruise and of course our cruise was not at capacity either but he said the shorter cruises are leading to more people because they're more affordable just leading to more people getting into all kind of riffraff and just constant mess and fights and stuff on the cruise like who goes on vacation and wanna act a fool? If you can't control yourself drinking, you might not ought to drink. Cause it seems like you just gonna be in <laughs> in just a happy place when you're on vacation. And so that's what I was telling them. She said, Mom, people don't change who they are just because they're on vacation. She said they go with a they stay same personalities with them. And you would think that, but Sadly, and I thought about this too, that's right. You know, and she said, and most of the time, it don't even be the people that plan the cruise. I mean, that, you know, those people that they came along maybe on a family trip or a group trip because it was affordable, now they acting a fool on the trip. You know, and she said, who wants to get in the middle of the ocean and act crazy? I don't know. I personally wouldn't chance getting put off. Because you got to think about that. You over there acting crazy like that, right? And it's only so much security can do. But now if the person is put off, that was good, y'all. If the person is put off the boat, now y'all got to worry about getting that person home. Are trying to help them get home. It's just a whole bunch of, whole bunch of, whole bunch of mess. But anyway, so what is your preferred cruise line? I told Amber after this one, if I go on another cruise, I would probably not do. Uh, I want to try something else. I want to do another cruise line. I always said I want to do a Disney cruise, but you already got to be prepared for if you cannot. Tolerate being around a lot of children, and you don't need to do that. You know, you know, the joy of children just having fun doesn't bother me, but some people don't really like that. I think they have an adults only section on Disney, but I'm not sure. But you know, if you like the Disney characters and stuff, I think that would be fun, and I think I would like to try because the Royal Caribbean has some pretty nice um ships. Well, they've always ended up parked by us when we dock, so I would love to. To see that as well. Anyway, I'm gonna get off here, y'all. I just want to come in. Happy Vlogmas Day. What are we on? Number four. Happy Vlogmas number four. Happy Sunday, Sunday dinner. <laughs> anyway, tell me what y'all cook good today. And y'all know I'm gonna see y'all. I'm gonna try to hang on in there. And we're gonna be on day five on tomorrow. I have an appointment on the sixth. I need to get into the dentist before the end of the year. 
on um, use some of my health benefits. So if you all have the kind of flexible spending account that I have, you have to use up your money prior to the end of the year that's on your card. It does not carry over, which I don't like, but it is what it is. So I'm going to definitely go, but I need to go to the dentist anyway because I got a tooth in the back that's bothering me. But this is just a reminder to get in and get into your appointments, use up your money if you have to, if you're in a situation like me, and you have to make sure you use up your money. And what I don't use up, I'm gonna, it's, it's really time for me to get some specials, but I need some contacts. I don't wear contacts very often, but I do wear them and I do need to get my eyes checked because I don't have any, so I need to have a few pair here. You know, when I wanna get extra, extra cute, cute. <laughs> y'all know I'm silly. Anyway, I'm gonna get off here, but I want y'all to have a good, good Sunday night. Start off your week with a bang. Don't let anybody get you down. You know, let them steal your joy. You know, go into your week with intentional joy, you know, and have yourself a blessed and happy night. Do something fun. I watched, um, I said I'm going to get off here. I watched um, Mary Tyler Moore earlier, The Odd Couple, and The Love Boat earlier. So it was kind of good to kind of veg out and watch those little old shows. What y'all watching good on TV? Tell us, sister. Tell her. Anyway, I'm going to get off here. Like I said, I'll see y'all tomorrow if God say the same want you to have a good night. You know you're loved. I love you, but God truly loves you the most. Remember to always be kind to yourself and others. Be joyful and be blessed. Love you. Bye.